Hey everyone, I'm back with another fancy little tidbit uh, that I think you might find quite helpful, especially if you're someone who's uh, in the realm of building your own computers for uh, running SolidWorks. Uh, SolidWorks has built with into it on an installation a SolidWorks benchmarking tool so you can see how your computer is performing and what areas are not performing well and what areas are performing admirably. So this tool is just a SOLIDWORKS performance test. Um, if you haven't found it or seen it or heard of it, you'll look again. It's located under your uh, start menu. Uh, again, it's Windows 8. Uh, under Windows 7, I'm sure you know how to navigate your start menu. You go to the SOLIDWORKS fol folder, SOLIDWORKS tools. Under SOLIDWORKS tools, you're going to look for SOLIDWORKS performance test. There it is, SOLIDWORKS performance test. It's actually um, in connection with the uh, SOLIDWORKS doctor. As you can see, the uh, icon for the performance test and the SOLIDWORKS doctor are the same. And this is another one that I have pinned to my taskbar because it's a nifty utility that I like to be able to refer to in the instance that my computer is not doing something that I want it to or if I want to make some sort of comparison to another device uh, to see which components or component I would rather change whatever the case so you open up the SOLIDWORKS performance test it pops up with a window that looks almost identical to the SOLIDWORKS doctor and it is even tagged SOLIDWORKS doctor it just has an add-in tab on it um, once it gets done gathering the system information we'll be able to take a look at running the uh, benchmark I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording for a moment and let that finish. It can take a couple minutes sometimes. It depends on how quick the program's running. So I'll be, be right back. Okay, I'm back. Uh, that only took me. didn't take very long. Um, like I said in the last video, this was a new user account that I set up, so it took a little longer than normal. And I also uh, had to do the initial startup of SOLIDWORKS because I still hadn't done that. So now that that's done and out of the way, uh, we're ready to go ahead and run the benchmark. Um, again, the benchmark, I will probably go ahead and pause out the video through part of it because uh, it can take, as you can see here, it says this test can take up to 30 minutes depending on your computer's configuration. Uh, this computer, it doesn't take anywhere near 30 minutes, but again, I won't make you sit and watch through the whole thing because it repeats the same test process five different times. But uh, we'll go ahead and give this a start and see where this computer lands out on the uh, benchmark. Uh, once this window comes up, basically it's just telling you the same thing. Um, you want to make sure that your SOLIDWORKS isn't running in the background. If SOLIDWORKS is running in the background, then the benchmark won't go through. You'll hit start, and it'll tell you to close SOLIDWORKS. So as you can see, I don't have SOLIDWORKS running, and here we go. Uh, test pass of SOLIDWORKS. This can take a little bit. It goes through a couple different processes. Uh, opening up SOLIDWORKS, closing SOLIDWORKS, opening up parts, doing some 3D rendering, uh, manipulation of parts, manipulation of drawings. Once it gets done with all of its tests, you'll get some test results at the end. Um, I'll let the recording go ahead and keep going here for part of the first test, and then I will uh, bring it, bring, turn it off for uh, up until probably part of the way through test five, and then I'll start recording again so that uh, you can see the test actually finish. Uh, the parts that it brings up in the uh, performance tests are actually in the files on your computer if you didn't know that they were there. Uh, so all you'll have to do is run the benchmark and it'll go get these parts. And you, you can actually open these parts up after the benchmark. They'll be in your uh, recently opened documents. And they're pretty neat parts, some injection molded block, uh, some other pe pieces. Kind of fun to mess around with, be like for parts that you didn't even know were actually on your computer fully modeled. Um, as you can see, it's doing a little bit of work looking at a drawing, closing SOLIDWORKS. Uh, it'll repeat this process with another part, start SOLIDWORKS, so on and so forth. So again, this is probably about halfway through test one. Um, I'll bring it back online for you to see the end of the recording for test five. Um, it's 9.14 right now, um, as you can see on your screen. And we'll see what it is uh, when this finishes.
Okay, so we're uh, probably about halfway through test five. Uh, it looks like about 11 minutes has elapsed since I uh, put you on pause, which to you was a matter of seconds now. Um, SolidWorks is working on finishing out this test. I'll let you uh, watch it finish out as the uh, last of this test goes. Uh, the, uh, this fancy part here is carrier of some sort, not exactly sure what it actually goes to, but uh, you'll do some fancy spinning around, some zooming in and out, do a drawing, a rendering, and that should be the end of the test. And we'll get the results. Running the uh, recording software over the top of uh, the SOLIDWORKS benchmarks test is probably going to hurt the numbers a little bit, but this is more just to show you the utility, not just not for uh, getting the best benchmark possible. And this computer is uh, it's an, an Acer V Nitro, I think is what it is. Uh, it's got an i7 processor in it. Um, nothing fancy. It's a fairly low clocked i7. A GTX graphics card, laptop graphics card. Does all right. Uh, let's see here our. Uh, Benchmark test is done. It scored an overall score. It does the scores in seconds. Um, when you're first looking at these numbers, they don't make a whole lot of sense. Uh, you have to go in and look at them a little bit to see how it compares and what it is compared to other computers out there and what the numbers are actually measuring. Um, but they're measuring the amount of time it took for each of the certain pieces of the computer to do its certain work. Um, the graphics card, for instance, scored a 23.7. Processor scored a 38.7. Um, the I and O is uh, representative in and out for loading and closing files. Um, basically, that's how fast it's reading your hard drives or your file storage system. Um, and then you have an overall score, which is a combination, obviously, overall. Um, I be willing to take a wild guess and say 23.7, 38.7, and 25.0 total out to 87.4. Um, and then it's also got a rendering score and real view performance. Uh, real view performance was something that really bugged me for a while until I looked into it, wanted to know what it was and why this computer wouldn't do it or why my, even my desktop at work wasn't capable of it up until recently. Uh, real view performance is just enhanced graphical representation of the parts within SOLIDWORKS. It does give them a really awesome look to them. Uh, that said, the, uh, in order to enable real view performance, you have to be running a graphics card that is uh, SOLIDWORKS certified. Or there's a few other ways to get around that out there if you want to really mess with it, but it requires some sort of hack or third-party software to make it work. Um, nothing I want to do because I want to make sure that my system stays stable and running correctly. Uh, so I recently upgraded my desktop at work to a, a AMD's Sapphire Fire Pro card, workstation cards. And what a difference that has made. Makes for a beautiful running model. Um, and I've actually got it up on remote desktop. And you can see um, the... Uh, cleanliness of the edges and how clean the reflection and everything is. Again, I'm about to rotate it and it's going to be a little bit blocky, but that's because I'm remote accessing my computer at work through my laptop. But you can tell with the way the reflections are and how clean the model is. It's just a, it gives a very nice sharp edges to have that. It also when you come up here and you select the uh, ambient occlusion and add that in with real view graphics, it gives you a very realistic shadowing of what your part's really going to look like. Um, again, as you see, this is just a uh, little quadcopter design that I came up with. I'm quite the hobbyist of all sorts, so this is something I'm planning on 3D printing. Um, 
but you can see the, the graphic representation of what it is and how it looks with the way the lighting is. It looks great once you're able to actually enable real view graphics and use things like ambient inclusion. Um, so, but it, that only works if you have a graphics card that supports real view performance or real view graphics. Um, to find out more about those graphics cards, you'll have to go on to SolidWorks or Dassault Systems website um, and look up graphics cards that they support for running real view graphics or multiple monitors, which is what I'm doing both of at work. And they've got a pretty extensive list of graphics cards and what drivers they are supporting. So now with these scores, again, uh, we can look at those in comparison to other results um, by going online. Just click here. I'll bring up a window online and it brings up all the scores that they have in their system. And as you can see, uh, whoever's computer this is running an NVIDIA Quadro 2000 graphics card, Xenon processor, um, who knows what all is actually into that computer. It's a pretty fancy piece of machinery there, but its processor scored a 0.1 seconds, real view graphics at 5.9. Regular graphics at 1.9, in and out time of 6.9. Um, obviously, it didn't run rendering in its test, not sure why. But when you compare those type of numbers to uh, the numbers that came up on this computer, definitely you can see a large significance of how fast and how well this one performed. So that gives you an idea of your benchmark. It'll tell you what areas your computer you're looking need to do a little bit more on. And there's a few other softwares and third-party softwares you can benchmark to as well. This is just the uh, SOLIDWORKS Performance Benchmark, which is built into your SOLIDWORKS software. Um, if you do close this and you want to get back to finding out what those scores are, um, they are located in your computer. It does save them for future reference. Um, they are in a temp file location, though. So if you want to permanently save them before you run a SOLIDWORKS doctor or clean up on your computer, which I talked about in my last video, you'll want to go in and move that file. So you'll go into your C drive. Uh, from there, you'll go to users. And then you'll go to the user in which you're on. From there, uh, you'll want to enable hidden, hidden folders in your folder options. Um, yeah, figure out where that's hidden at. Um, I won't waste your time on the video. Let me pause this real quick and enable my folder options, and then I'll bring it back. Hold on. Okay, that took a second. I uh, I don't use the Windows 8 for doing a whole lot on this computer. I do almost everything on my work computer for the most part, and I'm running Windows 7 on that, and a few things are in different places. But anyways, you'll go to users, your name or your account username, uh, the account user that I, name that I'm under right now is my tutorial account. Um, and then you'll go to app data, local, go down to your temp file, go to SW log files, and then your log file for that test that we just ran is right here. Um, it's a notepad file. This is what it'll come up looking like, and it's got all your test information what your computer name is, manufacturer, model number, OS, video card, CPU, how many cores you're running, total RAM, um, and then what your benchmark scores are across the board. So that's uh, something you can save. Um, like I said, it is an attempt file location, so if you want to make sure you can save it for comparing to some point later on down the road, you'll want to make sure to uh, move that this uh, file right here to a different location so that when you do a cleanup it doesn't get deleted with your temp files. Um, if you got any other questions that I might be able to answer feel free to leave them in my comments. Uh, thanks for watching and I hope this was helpful.